Hey there, how the devil are you? Um, are you a parent who is struggling to communicate with their child, struggling to connect with um, maybe your teenager? Well, if you are, then you've come to the right place because in this episode, we're talking about communication and specifically rapport. My name is Kai Graham. I am a parenting specialist. I am author of the best-selling book, uh, The Team Toolbox, and it's available on Amazon. And um, it is my mission to support you parents so that together we can um, support and help your kids to, so that we can build a mentally healthier and happier generation of young people. And how do we do that when our kids aren't speaking to us? Do you ever walk into a room and you get that energy immediately? You just get that feeling that something's going down, you've missed something, someone's in a bad mood or whatever it is, and you can just suss it. And maybe someone's sitting in a heap or maybe you can hear the shouting from the room before you ever come in. It's funny that communication, they say, and you know, there are sort of many myths about it and many, um, or many sort of statistics that um, you can grab the, the meaning of a conversation without even listening to the words, that it's all about the energy, it's about the tone of the voices that you can hear, it's about the body language, and that's what I'm gonna to speak to you about. Um, I think the thing is, is that we really need to build that connection with our child. And you might be sort of thinking, oh God, come on, Kai, yeah, thanks a lot. But I mean, if my kids aren't even sort of listening to a word I say, or if they're permanently holed up in their bedroom, how on earth can I, can I do that? Well, it's your responsibility as the parent to act as the grown up and to take control. And how we do that is specifically, I'm gonna talk about today is rapport. Well, what on earth is rapport? Well, some bright spark said, and I think I sort of, I can relate to this, that rapport is the ability to enter someone's world, to make them feel understood and to, and to form a common bond. How blimmin' cool would that be if you were able to do that with your child? Um, there are many sort of pointers that I can give you, but you know, a few of them, are uh, we all like, and if you follow me, you'll, you'll hear this a lot. As individuals, there's Maslow's hierarchy of needs or something. Um, and as great as it is, I'm not going to go into all the sort of ins and outs, but basically, as individuals, we like to be loved. Or we need to be loved, understood and respected. And your teenager, your child is no exception. So pay attention to their world. Pay attention to what is going on. Show some interest in, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've reached level whatever in, in um, Fortnite. The fact that their geography went all right, the fact that they're sitting next to someone different in class, the fact that something hysterical happened on the bus today, because it's those little things, the little things that create your child's world, that is really, really important to them. That's what they are living every single day. So it is showing, showing an interest in what's going on. I think the thing is, is that we want to build up a rapport. We want to build up a connection with our kids. We want to be on their wavelength. Do you ever hear them sort of say, well, you just don't get me? Well, yeah, it's fairly rubbish if someone doesn't get you. It's a bit like sort of you being a yoga fanatic and someone said, oh my God, there's this fabulous Pilates class. And you go, no, that's not me. Or someone sort of saying, you know, oh, this is such a fabulous book and, and, and you sort of just nah, don't really like the way they write. But do you know what I mean? It's, it's getting on the same wavelength as someone. And we have to do that with our kids, even if you can't send their music, even if you're not terribly keen on their friends, even if it's a fortnight, seriously, or, 
you know, whatever they're watching on TV. They don't, you know, most of them watch YouTube now. But it's, it's getting a glimpse on what's going on in their world. And it's working out where you can get the similarities, where you can touch base with them. With my daughter at the minute, well, she's just engaged, so we're sort of, you know, we're, she, she lives in um, London, so we're sending sort of, you know, loads of Instagram pictures of dresses and receptions and, oh my God, have you seen what they do at, you know, the favours? And, you know, and we've got that common bond and she's sort of laughing, I mean, you know, laughing at some of the things that, that we're coming up with. And, and just, we know, you know, you, it's just... It's a big part of her world at the minute, but it's maintaining the fact of, let's just maintain a degree of perspective and let's just main, you know, it's, it's not, you know, lots of people, but it's the happiest day of my life. My view is fine, but if your wedding day is the happiest day of your life, bad luck with that because the next 50 years are gonna be rather dull. Do you know what I mean? So we have to get everything into perspective. My darling son, the, the, the thing that we've got in common and, and is politics at the minute. And I tell you what, he's educating me fast. Um, so it's, it's just, we have to tune in to what's important to our kids. And if they're little, then it's colouring in between the lines and suck it up and get on with it because that's really important to a five-year-old. So it's just building on the similarities that you have, but also respecting, loved, understood and respected. It's also acknowledging that, yeah, we have differences and that's all right. My darling, darling husband is a mammal. A middle-aged middle -aged man in Lycra, and he loves cycling. And I, I've tried. I really have. I've tried it. And we now respect our differences. And we now respect that it's never going to be part of my world. But I celebrate the fact that it's a big, big part of his. It's a big part of his social life. It's fantastic for his mental health. It gets his mental, his work-life balance in order. So respecting one another's differences is so important. And that's the whole thing about family life. And I think the thing is, is that we try, oh, well, he's the black sheep because he's not like us. And the whole point is, is that what we need to do is we need to embrace ourselves as a group. We are a team. Our family is a team. But what we have to do is respect that individual or those individuals in the group because that is what relationships all about. And if we cannot do that and we're trying to mold our teenager that's not quite right, then you are just, my friend, on a hiding to nothing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's respecting everyone's differences and knowing knowing that it's all right to be different, it's all right not to agree, it's all right that each of us has something different to bring to the table. I think the thing is, is that our children, especially when they come to the teenage years, are vying for independence. They're, they are programmed for independence. They're programmed to biologically to pull away, especially sons and mothers. And, and that causes a lot of friction if you don't understand it. Um, I, I discussed that in um, my previous um, my previous series, um, all, all About Emotions, on YouTube. So go and hunt that down if you're interested. But it's all about understanding that our kids are meant to be becoming independent and they are meant to be pushing buttons and pushing the boundaries. And that's what it's all about. But it is our job to guide them so that as a group and as a family team, we can get along together, we can relate to one another, we can respect one another, and we can love one another, even though we're the same but different, if that makes sense. <coughs> Excuse me. So how do we, <coughs> I'm not gonna edit that. How do we build um, rapport? I think the thing is, is that rapport is, as I said, finding that common bond between um, one another. Um, and what is important is, as an individual, you take responsibility of your feelings and your part in the conversation, and you can't change someone else. 
But rapport is a great way of trying to pull you together, trying to build up that relationship and build up, build up that connection. I mean, good rapport is when everything's going along swimmingly and you're enjoying each other's company. Bad rapport is ah, 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 when it's not quite going so well. And it, it can actually be a fine line, really, between um, sort of one, one and the other. But as I said, it's all about each of us feeling loved, understood and respected. And a great way of having our child feel understood and respected. I, I spoke about love in, in the, previous, um, uh, the previous series, but the, 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 one of the ish, uh, episodes was, are you loving your child unconditionally? Go and check it out. But what I'm talking about now is how we can encourage our child and, and make sure our, ch our children are feeling understood and respected. And how we do that, a great way of doing that is, as I touched on earlier, is showing an interest in what they're up to. But it's also something as simple as asking their opinion. I mean, you know, what do they think about something? What, you know, because I think very often we... For, for a long time, in the formative years, we are leading, and so we, should, we still should do, you know, to an extent, but we are managing our children to, to, you know, to begin with. But I think the roles change when they become teenagers and we need to become their mentor. So we need to find out where they stand, and so do they. They need to sort of work out where they stand in the world. And they can do that by building their own confidence within the family, their self-esteem within the family. And we nurture that by asking their opinions and by getting them to make decisions. And it could be as simple as, what are we going to eat tonight? Or where do you want to go for, you know, which restaurant do you want to go to? Or, you know, let's talk about our family holidays. Or we're thinking of changing a car, you know, what, what car do you fancy? And, and no, you're not, you don't have to go and buy the latest Ferrari. I mean, you know, come on, let's be realistic. But the very fact that your child is being brought into an adult conversation gives them that feeling of being heard. And when we are heard, that's next episode, all about listening, but we feel understood and respected. And so building rapport is about building that, you know, becoming in sync with someone, I think that's the thing. Um, and a lot of it is, is not even, uh, episode three is the language that, you know, how, how to use the right language, but it, it starts way before that when you're building rapport. If you, if you I encourage you, you know, to go and have a, um, a look, maybe go people watching, for half an hour or an hour in between the school runs or in your lunch break or whatever it is and just watch people and watch how they are interacting and watch the body language because that's a lot of it is watching how everyone interacts see you know if, if you're close enough listen to the conversation the first thing is to notice the voice notice the tone of the voice I mean, you know, if, if you're walking into an argument, you can get it. You can you forget about the words. You can hear what's going on. It's high pitched and it's boom, 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 and na 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 na. And you can hear the different the the different tonality and the rhythm of the voice. You can hear um, when um, it's it's highly charged, and you can get a gist. Of, oh, something's not going down well here. You know, you you get an idea. So. When you're talking to your child, listen to the, the, their tone of voice. When they come in from school, are they confrontational or are they just knackered and are they just drained? And you can get a sense of that just by listening to their tone of voice. Um, concentrate on your breathing, but also on their breathing. So what, what you're really wanting to do is you're trying to mirror someone else's behavior so that you two, you feel in sync. Um, if it's an argument, I would suggest you need to bring the, the, the charge down a bit. So rather than hit someone with an argument at the same pace, and, nah, 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 you know, there's, there's no point. But if, if you're just trying to understand and build a rapport with someone, just notice 
see if you can start mirroring or start mirroring it and then bringing it back, uh, uh, you know, the tone of voice and the speed of your voice. Just bring it back to something that's calm and something that's a lot more stable. Listen to your breathing, pay attention to your breathing and that of the other person. Are they agitated? Are they cross? Are they panicky or are they calm, cool and collected? You know, I don't know if you remember or if you did, but whenever I used to go to try and get my toddlers to go to sleep, you know, if you lay next to them and you just sort of gently sort of, you know, placated them and tried to match their breathing, then what you were able to do is pull your breathing into a more a more relaxed way and you could hear that actually they were being pulled into calmness. So it's a great way of communicating with calm and 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 that's the best thing to do in any situation, you know, sort of just with authority um, so that your child feels, just so they feel held and 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 led without the chaos that they're used to in, in everyday life. Um, third, look at the body language. You know, is it all this? You know, or, or, or are you sort of open and, you know, watch it in a coffee shop and see. So look at the people, because what starts happening is people start mirroring themselves. So if, if, if you're sort of sitting back in your chair or if they're sitting back, watch that, you know, sort of, they, they both seem to adopt the same... Um, approach the same body language and when that happens it can be really really powerful the point is that if you start mirroring the the body language badly it can be really really alienating as well you know if you've got a teenager if you're standing there as well it, it immediately alienates so you've got to use You've got to use a degree of common sense here, but just just watch. Are they sitting back in their chair or forward, or you know, if if, if there's a uh, if you're standing up, are they towering over you? We've got sort of a relative that that often uses his height to control the people he's speaking to by towering over them, which he might not realise he's doing, but is very threatening, especially if you're my height. Um, notice the language that is being used, especially with teenagers. And I tell you what, if you don't understand what they're saying, seek clarification because there is nothing worse than misunderstanding something because you're, um, you know, you, that, that you're, you're making an assumption and actually you've got the meaning wrong because there's so much slang nowadays that, um, you know, God, that's so sick. And it's like, mm, what, what does that mean? Because sick in my view means that they're not very well, but no, it's, it's teenagers language is totally different now. So it's worth observing what they're saying, but also see, seek clarification if you need to. So I encourage you just as a little exercise, go and see how other people, not how they do it, but how people naturally react, how people naturally sort of, you know, go and look at a group of girlfriends and see the sort of, you know, how they are interacting. Go and look at a, a mum and her kids, go and look at two people in a business meeting and just watch and see how they are building rapport successfully or not, as the case may be. So, you know, it's quite important because you can get a lot by people watching. So observe the voice, the tone of voice, the, you know, the speed of the voice, um, the, the volume, um, all gives you great signals as to how the conversation is flowing. Look at the breathing, look at your breathing, look at the breathing of other people around you. Is it irate? Are they agitated? Do they just need space? Look at the body language, because I think they do say something like, you know, um, what is it, 90%, oh, 10% of the um, communication is down to uh, the words that are used, and 90% are everything else all the intangibles that, that you know that, that that need to be read and interpreted and then finally listen to the language what sort of language are they using not only slang but are they blue sky thinkers we'll talk about that in episode three or are they detailed people because how you then communicate with that person is very very different you know i speak to my son very differently to my daughter and i've learned that um if i spoke to them in the wrong way, well, that, I, I, that would be, you know, not get the results I would be hoping for. So have a think. 
But the first thing is building rapport, building that connection with your child to show them that actually you've got their back. So good luck with that. And I'll speak to you next time about listening.